Hey folks, uh, oh, look at my, my poor Winamp. That thing is so tiny. Why for art thou so tiny? Let's see if we can uh, figure this out. Oh, look at that. Ah, uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was not surprised. I tried to catch it when I recorded the last stream, but that, because I'm doing video game music, the moment it hit WWE music, I was like, ah, I'm gonna get strikes for that on the on YouTube and I did but luckily they have the beta thing for oops, beta thing for removing the uh, music without needing to go back and re-edit the whole video so that was very nice uh, our plans today going off of the previous video is we are going to add in a debug canvas just so I can trivially change some of the stuff that's here in this window I recognize I need to fix that draw editor sometime but it doesn't affect gameplay so i don't care as much uh once we get this the window made excuse me that'll uh that'll help us understand better what we're trying to accomplish uh when it comes to ui interacting with with our code and it'll also make the last few steps of sort of bug testing the vertical slice easier or should so all right we've got our canvas it is set to overlay which actually means if you go into the scene obnoxiously it is uh eh. actually you can't see it right now interesting oh is it the angle no hmm. maybe they fixed it finally in uh 2020 i haven't kept up with overlay canvases in general because I generally use uh, screen space camera or world space for canvases. Um, according to Unity, you should actually use as few as you possibly can manage. Or zero, if, if you want. I'm not going to do that for a debug window because... Oh, we're interesting. So it's actually, we are on the opposite side of it. Yeah, I'm not going to do that for a debug window because it's only for me and possibly anyone who, if I leave it in the code, that uh, comes along and unlocks it with an editor or something. But, yeah. So, the first thing we want to make is we're going to make... We'll, we'll actually create a new group here for this. And we'll just go with debug. And we're going to actually create a... Uh, debug manager lately I've been doing single use uh, code but for the case of debugging you might as well just sort of composite it all together I think that's totally harmless in this case because again it's these are utilities that are just free they are just for um, tracking sort of the state of things and we can be very sloppy with how we hook them up as opposed to the code that we are expecting to have in the final product. Um, okay. So, there's a few things that we're going to want. We're going to be changing the game state with this. In fact, that actually make, reminds me, do they have... They do. They do have a drop-down. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to attach this drop-down. Oh my goodness, that autocorrect is getting me. All right, we're just gonna type drop-down. And, well, well, maybe not, drop-down. And we're gonna see what it actually was. Unity engine.ui, okay. Game mode, drop-down. Save that. We also need to uh, get access to the game data because that's going to be where we pull this information from. Serialize both those things. And drop down goes here, I thought. Was that not the right thing? What are they? What's this called? Drop down dash text mesh pro? That's. Just that. Well, let's real quick. We'll make a drop down that's not text mesh pro and see if that can actually go in there. 
if it can, then we will... Okay, so we will just find the text mesh pro one, which is probably in using TM Pro. Yeah, there it is. Problem solving. Okay. So we now can catch our drop down window, add game data, and now we have access to those two things. So, what we want to figure out is how to populate the options. And so we're going to really quick try this out. We're going to say, or actually it's an enum. Game data dot game mode. mode. Goes, currently goes up to room selected, which is two. Uh, there's a way if you, if you wanted to, so you could actually, if you're ever making enums, you can actually do... The, if you make the last enum count, for instance, then you'll get a list of values. So we're going to try that. We're going to do four int i equals zero. i is less than game data dot mode dot count. And then uh, i plus plus. You might say to yourself, well, isn't there... Whoops, got to convert that to int. You might say to yourself, well, isn't there a negative one dummy value? Yes, but we don't want to be able to set, or, or currently I don't want to be able to set the uh, game settings to that. All right, so what we're doing here is in game mode, drop down to options. Let's see here. So this is a 4-H as well. New... Option data. Nice. Okay. Oh, we actually, we want to do that here. And then here. Drop down. Oops. Uh, options. Add options. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Actually have a clear options. We'll do that. Add options. And does it have to be a list? Could be a list of strings. That is tempting. I assume it's literally... Just checking something really quick. Is it brackets? It's been a, it's been a while. It's been a hot minute, as they say. That is a cast, an I, and then from there, what am I forgetting here? So maybe it was actually this. And then we are forgetting the... Oh, oh, oh. There we go. You know, if you just stumble along, you'll eventually get there. So we're going to try this real quick. I have a feeling it'll just fail, but... Talk about low... Low danger. Hey, it did not fail. In fact, it worked. Huh. Alright. Probably, again, not the most efficient way to do it, but... Cool. Okay. So now we need to do on the value changed. We need that to come up here to the canvas itself. Public void game mode change. And what's that passing through there? Int 32. Oh, is int just an int 32? I guess we'll find out. Value. Debug.log value. Please do. Okay. Anytime it's a game where the fully 
Japanese title. I'm like, is this going to be something with actual lyrics? Because if so, may need to fix that. <laughs> uh, okay, so debug manager on game mode changed. So if we hit play, one, zero, two, exactly what we're expecting. And then we go over to our uh, game data. And we know the game mode. We actually need to cast this and value. So now we'll still want to debug log in a moment, but oh, let me fix this microphone. Poor thing sags so bad. May eventually switch it for a different one. Um, so now uh, we, when we switch the game mode, we should be able to go over to the game manager and see that it is actually changed. Hey, my mode has updated to room building. Oh, yeah, and that works. Uh, room selected. Obviously, it doesn't do anything right now because there is no room selected. And then if we click on here, awesome. Okay. So we're going to tweak the scale of this a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. And we're going to have it. Can we tell it to open up instead of down? Let's see. Interactable. Yeah, I don't know. I'll do this. Because this makes my life easier for getting it over there. I'll hit play real quick and find out if it uh, goes up. Oh, it does by... Wow. Unity developers, thank you. That is very helpful. So now we can easily change the uh, game state. How nice. So next, we would like to have a button that uh, spawns moose cat. Go down here, we'll hit that auto size because ain't nobody got time for that. And I believe we want to add in a little bit of padding. Whoops, not top. Keep that top as normal. There we go. Even I've got some standards when it comes to the uh, debug stuff. Um, having a bit of a debate with myself. We go over here. I'll show you what I'm thinking in a moment here. Go like that. Boop, boop. About that wide. We'll say that tall for now. Uh, 800 sounds good. 325, because I love me some nice round numbers. Whoa, that's way too round. There you go. Vertical layout. Probably should be a scroll wrecked eventually, but now we take these two good old kiddos, put them in there. Uh, we should middle center, and we do not want to force expand on either of these things. Or wait, do we want it for height? Maybe we do. And we can just shrink this window. And when we add another one, we can just add it to the group, stretch it out a little bit. Not really do any math, you know? As the Unity God intended. So now this spawn moose cap button is actually pretty interesting for now because we only have one kind of moose cap. So if we actually go find this function and then raise it, we can flex on the haters, as they say. Boom. Now, obviously, there's a no reference error here that we can now fix. 
Which I think is going to be the one where it's assigning to a room. No, it's, uh, it's not assigning the name. Okay. So. Oh! Oh, it's using this one instead of this one. Fair, fair, because it is sending through a null reference, ob null object. And in that case, what we want to do is not set the name here. Yeah, I think that was the one I used. Yes. I'm actually surprised that it went through... Let's see. Just to be... Just to confirm. Line 27. Yes, okay. So it did go through here. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. We can just do a null reference check for now because we're doing this for debug purposes. If value equals null, debug.log warning got two upper. Loose cat value is no. Ignore if from debug event. And we can actually... Mm, do we want to be even classier than that? Maybe we do. Let's just do this. Void spawn moose cat. And what we will say is uh, we need to add the event. And we're going to say on spawn moose cat, and we're going to pass through uh, L debuggo. And then we'll go back to the debug canvas. Assign. We. Oh, there we go. That's what I needed to see. Look at that. Beautiful. It was, uh, it was out like this, which was not helpful. This is helpful. Okay, and then we will still continue to flex on the haters, but we will do it one step removed. But again, that's the power of this event system, and this is a big part of why you use it. So now we can actually get rid of this, and so it's actually passing through a moose cat data which tells me that I want to go back to the debug manager and do a uh, new moose cat data. And as we look, we see that we don't have a constructor perhaps for it. Ah, we do if we pass moose cat through. Oh, so if we don't, we would want to instantiate a moose cat. Ah, yeah, this is for data loading. Okay, that's what's going on here. So that's actually what our flaw is in this flow, is that... This is just for saving and loading. And what we actually want to be kind of using is this. So what we can do is we consolidate these two. And we'll say if value is null. And we will take this. Oh, that's really quiet. But I do enjoy that song quite a bit. So let's turn it up a little bit. Yeah, and then we'll just turn down a little bit on the stream. And so I can still enjoy it. Okay, so. Ah, yeah, you know what? We can. Let's do that. If we are just creating a moosecat data, 
doesn't actually assign anything yet. And then if the value is null, then we would not do this. Ooh. I wonder what this is. Midnight Club? I guess we'll find out if that's okay or not. Part of the excitement, I guess. Alright, so if the data coming through is null, there's a few things we need to do. Obviously, this is happening no matter what. Oh, this is actually happening no matter what. Now, what is happening when we are spawning a randomized moose cat? We probably want to just do this. Oh. Yeah, that works. You know, you put your... a couple of your thoughts together and... Let's control Z this a bit. Bam. Okay. That's way easier. That also means we can go back to this and remove this. No point in overcomplicating it. And this can now be just raised. In fact, we actually don't need this anymore at all. So we could go back to what I did before. Well, it's already working at this point, or should be, so I, I suppose we don't need to. Alright, click that. Whoop. Well, you gotta hit play first. Okay. So now that is good. So, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the current, uh, status down here matches the actual game status. So, game mode drop down dot, let's see, uh, value perhaps equals game data dot mode. Like that. So now, when we come back over here, We see it's set to room selected, and if we go look, it's at room selected. Bam, bam, boom. Mm. Oh, 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 I see. Because we are changing it right here, that's causing this to happen. So let's think about this for a minute. I mean, it's actually not a problem, but I just want to see what other options we have. Ah, here we go. Beautiful. All right, and we see it set to room selected. If we set it to playing, stop and restart. It'll be playing. And if we set it to room building, stop and restart. Perfect. Okay. So now we can spawn moose cats. We can uh, set the game state. What other quick tools do we want? Oh, we've got adding moose cats to the current room. 
That's an interesting one that I don't know if necessarily right now could be done with a quick debug. Selecting adventure could actually be done. Oh, we could do both. Yeah, okay. Uh, adventure. And then we have Moose Camp Data. Okay, so what we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of back and forth here. And what we need to do is add our references. Ah, so pretty. If you were to ask me why this window keeps spawning over there. I would tell you, no idea, chief. Okay, so now these are all assigned. And we need to do a bit of back and forth, basically. Which is... Um, we, uh, we need to make a few more drop-downs. So we're gonna... So this is game state drop-down. Uh, we got four total. Okay. Mmm, beautiful, okay. Game state. Selected. Moose cat. That actually, that one might not actually be helpful, we'll see. Selected a room. Selected adventure. Okay. And we'll this down. Selected a room. Selected moose cat. Selected adventure. I don't know that this third, third one's actually got a purpose yet. Uh, that one we may not even hook up. We'll see. Anytime. Did I not hit save? I did not. Alright. Selected moose cat. Selected room. Selected adventure. Do a little bit of prettying up here. Mmm, look at that. Saucy. Alright. This, you wanted me to make it public, right? Oh, whatever. Huh? Heat man. Alright. It's a bit of a banger, though. So, similar to these. How uh, the in index should equal the same index from the arrays themselves. Good job, me. Okay. So we'll start with selected room. Uh, we actually probably want to do this whenever the rooms are... Eh, we'll just create a button real quick. Good boy. Update. Drop downs. Just so we can test the feature itself. So basically, whenever this button is clicked, it's going to clear the drop downs. It's going to iterate through their parent objects, the data structures, and it's going to populate them with the relevant info in the same order that it's in the drop downs. 
Yeah, it is epic. I'm coming for you, Jean. It's actually kind of funny because I, I work with uh, a few Jeans actually. One fancy pronounce uh, pronunciation, another one not. So selected room drop down dot clear, and then we're gonna say for int i equals zero i is less than rooms data dot room dot count, and then from here we will do effectively. Oh, could we? Could we just do a bit of... Rooms data... Find all... R where R, really? Well, let me do that. I actually just want to... Oh, we can just use link and that'll make it work. That's the thing. Sometimes, like, your brain just isn't all there, you know? Select uh, R and R dot name. And this should return. Now, my thing is do I need to do select many? Or just select. Guess we'll find out. And this is... Uh, at this point, it should be a string list, actually. Okay, that's looking promising. Okay, so we'll just try it first with rooms, and then if that works, we'll add the other ones. What? What's this? Number 50 in my loader? Ah! Interesting. We'll want to fix that later. That may have been me saving something when we shouldn't have. Ah, yeah, that moose cat that was spawned was not assigned to a room. Ah! Yes, that makes total sense. Because we currently don't... This The game as it's currently designed does not guarantee that there will be a room. So... And then this is still room data, I believe. And so it'll go looking for it, and then if it's not null, it'll add the room. There you go. Look at that bug fixing in the middle of testing our debugging. That is literally, by definition, what the stuff is for. So we still got an error, but now we're getting an error at adventure data. And it happened from line 63. Likely the exact same thing where the cat got the adventure got null added to it? Probably. And so, yeah. The, uh, no, actually, let's check that real quick. I do appreciate that for the most part, I can, yeah, okay. So. 
we'll come back to that because that's actually one of the things that I want to finish is fixing up that stuff. Wait, I thought I... Fix that. Well, Chief, clearly you didn't. Fair enough. So what that's telling me is that the loader is turning this into a... Uh, no reference of some kind. So if we hit that and we go back and look, yep. We done found it. Okay. We'll add that to the list of things to fix. That's fine. And that would be happening... I mean, it's obviously happening here. Well, actually, that's not true. It's probably happening here. Specifically. Saving and loading, I tell ya. Complicated thing, but the nice thing about fixing it along the way is that, uh... You don't have to think about it too much. Okay. So we'll set it to room building. We'll make a few rooms. We'll go into our container. And we're going to give them all... Uh, oh, they don't have names currently. So we'll need to potentially fix that. Uh, let's see. Update dropdowns. Oh, so close. Look at that. One, two, three, four... Five. Okay. So we want to fix that. And this is because the rooms themselves. They have position. They've got cats. And what data? They got themes, which I suppose we could use. Or we could use their positional data. Let's do that. Okay. Give it the old play. Make, eh, we'll make four. Update our dropdown, and there we go. We now have a list. So from that list, we want to be able to set the current room. So we're going to say... Public void on current selected room change. And then from there, we want to set So currently the only way to set current room is that, but we can get it to it here. Equals rooms data dot uh, room data's value dot room. That current room. Do, 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 do. There we go. And we just need to fix what it's passing through. Beep or beep bop boop beep. Okay, we got our list. We will uh, pick this one. Okay, so it did fail. So let's see, where did it fail and why? Setting... Oh! Is my room's data broken? Yes. So this is actually looking okay so far. Let's try that again. And then go down here. 
update our drop down like that and then if we look at our selected room it did update okay This isn't updating. We had this issue yesterday. Don't need to worry about that. Don't need to worry about that. Oh, I suppose we should check also that... Let's do that so we can also see the positional data. Beep, boop, bop, beep, boop. Negative three, two, negative two, negative three. Okay, so it is assigning the correct room. But what we see here is we do have a interesting problem in that these are definitely attached. And the value is definitely being updated. I don't think we need to do set value because that should be exactly the same thing. But you know what? Sometimes you want to just check. Oh. Oh. All right. I see exactly what's going wrong here. See, and this is why you check. How lovely is that? So we got rooms data, room datas, <laughs> getting trolled by my own stuff. Eh, R where R dot room equals room. And the reason we couldn't see it, eh, we'll actually do this. The reason we couldn't see it is because we were updating a value that is invisible to the inspector. For those of you playing the home game, because we have it set as a property. Update. Sign negative one zero. Negative one zero. Boom. Oh. Well. That's another one solved. Another mystery down. So now adventures and current adventure are correct. Uh, did we have... Yeah, we only have adventures and rooms. So this moose cat one actually isn't going to do much of anything for now. But now we know... That... This code works. So what we would need to do now... Is have... We could do update rooms drop down. Get rid of that button. Go in. Add a new child. And debug events, fine. On room added. We'll add a game event listener.
Who knew that Nier Automata had amazing music? Everyone has played it, I suppose. Uh, right, that should be almost it. Almost. We don't really want this event around otherwise, but, uh... And then... So what this compile flag does for us is that if somebody were playing this game, that this wouldn't get compiled when it's built, and this next bit right here wouldn't get compiled. This is strictly, and I hate that they go all the way to the end, but compile flags are supposed to be over here for some inane reason. Oh! I just noticed you can't really see my mouse when I'm on this window. Interesting. Um, anyways. Okay, so, in theory, each time we click, this list will grow. Yeah, look at that, huh? Now you're thinking with portals. So, we might as well, at this point, go back and fix our adventures data. Because what we know is when this data is being saved... We check, and we see that the instance ID has changed. I think that's what our problem is. This instance ID on the the previous time that I ran... Um, brain, sorry. Previous time that I ran Unity, this instance ID was 0. Um, and now it's 18068. So, that means we need to go in here... And we need to adjust how this data is loaded. Previously, we were just doing a JSON overwrite. But it seems like we might need to do a temporary instance of it. Let's think here for a moment. The data we're trying to save is actually... It is all three things, but... Do we need to do custom saving for this one? Because we've got it solved for the moose cat's data. Like if we if we spawn a few moose cats and we save the data. The reason that it works is just because we're actually just spawning them agnostic to their information. So that is something that would have to be fixed later. So with that in mind, we play the thinky-thinky game. Obviously, this is unacceptable. Or, sorry, this is unacceptable in the this instance. What are the three we're doing? Uh, room data is the other one. So room data is fine because it's just... Positional data, and this part is kind of saved. It's saved in the sense of it is stored, but it doesn't actually help. Like, you could edit it, and it wouldn't do anything. But it's this positional data that gets us the answers. Sorry, got hit uh, some uh, messages on my phone distracted me. Um, so this is fine here, but here the problem is that we don't actually want this object to be overwritten. We would like the 
internals of it to update, but not the content itself. So the way that we've done it down here is matching up the cat. Interesting question. Can we assign instance IDs? I assume not. Good music. It's nice and epic for the moment. Because this is fine. Let's move this over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add these two. And then we're going to save. And then we're going to close. Open. See if everything loads. And it does. And then we're going to close Unity. Reopen it. And then we're going to see if it works to test my theory. It may just be that every time I update this stuff, it doesn't work, but it still means it's something I'll have to... Nope, there we go. Okay. So that's it. That's what it is, is that when we close and reopen this information, the IDs change. All right. That's annoying, but not the end of the world. That just means that we can't do this. But what we can do... is create a new instance of the... Uh, is that going to let me do that? From JSON is... Okay, so... In theory, this has created... That structure. And then down here... What we would do... Wait, is this already okay? Or did the moose cats also lose their reference? Is this all good? Okay. So we can't do that, but we'll worry about that in a moment. We'll hide this for a moment. And then none of these have an adventure tied to them because, as we discussed, they wouldn't have it. And their room position, this is actually correct, that negative 9001 thing. So what we need to do is similar to this, where room position is set here. When we set the adventure, we need to also grab the adventure's name.
equals. And we could actually do it this way. Uh, as long as you do this part right. Uh, what this is saying is that if if uh, if this does not equal null, then grab its name. Otherwise, just use nothing. And then we can go back to our loading. Uh, where was I? Interesting, it's on the... Did I intend to do that? I suppose so. What did I call it? Uh, title, I believe. Okay, and then... load. Obviously they don't have any adventures assigned to them. And if I attach it here, it won't actually work. So what we need to do is make sure that our selected adventure is set. And just be doubly sure that it worked. We will go into adventures and grab it. And we will edit by adding you. Okay. Now it's saved. We'll check, make sure I saved here. I kind of did, but not, not the right way. Sad. Okay, still good. Still up. That makes sense. And so what I want to do over here is I'm going to want to add all my adventures for selecting a specific one. Okay, selected. Go in here, grab top one. Do it. We see the name, then we hit save, and this is going to get cleared. And then we'll hit load. Did not assign it, but let's look here. Doesn't look like it was serialized. It's got their names and the adventure they were on. Underscore adventure. So that is under Moose Cat Data? Yes. Okay. So that's where we were getting thrown off here. Uh, go 
we'll grab that in a moment. That should work. And we do have the room here. So... We could also move room position there. And I'll show you why in a moment. What we can do here Oh, we don't want that serialized. That's fine. Whoops, why did I put that there? Life works in mysterious ways sometimes, I guess. Think? Mm, no, probably not. We'll just leave it public like that. And then And then we can do the same thing here where it's uh There we go. So we're basically, whenever the room is updated, if the value does not equal no, we'll grab the position. Otherwise, yeah. And that should give us the data for IO. And it moves it all off of the cat itself. In fact, when we go back in here and look, I don't think. This is actually supposed to be here. Where's this? Okay. Yeah, we'll actually fix that. We don't need to be doing non game object stuff on the cats themselves. Okay, and we'll go back. There's gonna be a few errors that we need to solve now, but that's fine. It's all part of refactoring. Won't worry about the loader for now. Right now, that is currently passing through. Okay. Always moving forward. And then we go in here. And then... Oh, 
Oh wait, am I passing the entire thing through? Oh. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, we don't need this anymore. Other than eventually removing it from the... visual scene at some point. And then similar thing needs to happen down here. Okay, so that should take care of that oopsie. And then... That takes care of that oopsie. Currently, we are selecting all the moose cats. But in actuality, we don't need to select one layer down at all. Okay. And then if memory serves, I have one area where I need to go assign a scriptable object. Adventure Editor. I just hadn't saved yet. That's why I didn't see it. Okay. Spawn a few cats. Almost added to null adventure data. It shouldn't be. Oh, it is. Okay. Okay. And we go check our moose cat data. Well, our selected adventure sees it. That's all well and good. However, what did not happen here is the cat itself wasn't added. That was my fault. I think I just deleted that line a couple seconds ago. Okay, so first things first. You best believe tomorrow when we go to do more of this, I'm going to make the button for 
selecting adventure. Uh, maybe even before tomorrow. Uh, grab this, put it over there. Check the data. Okay, it does have it. Check the... What's in here? A couple of nuns. Okay. Uh, that's good. That's also good. We'll hit save. Load. Hey! Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. So, we fixed that issue. And we indeed, we see here. Oh, awesome. Oh, man. Okay, cool. That is fantastic. So now, we are going to... Fix the selected adventure drop down. And then I think that'll be a good stopping point. And that's going to be, uh, Let's just set. Yeah, okay. And same thing as before, where it's uh, adventures dot adventure data's value dot adventure. A lot of the word adventure search does not look like a real word, but you know, you work with what you got. Save that, and then void update adventures, update selected adventure drop down. Clear. And then we need a list of strings again. And that should work. And then similarly, we're going to want to have this happen on the selected adventure changing. This is another thing that we don't need. I guess we could put it here or... In, I think this is the only place that actually does that, so we might as well just put it here for now. Oh, there goes my tab key. Whoa, my insert key was apparently on fire. Did I not save? I did. But I didn't serialize. And interesting, hold on. Hmm. 
was this even doing before? Whatever it was doing, we have since deleted it, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. But conveniently, it was already there, so we're actually going to move that down into debug. And we're going to go find it. Now that we have found it. Okay. We're also going to want to do that on start. Did adventure. Right, then we'd want to find the index, so it would be adventure data dot find index where equals Uh, let's see. There you go. And then it's uh, adventure drop down dot set value without notify. All right. Let's see. Well, it... Oh. This one, apparently. He's on the bottom, all sad. So we are clearing... Okay, that was weird. So this is rooms, this is probably... Yeah, okay. So we'll turn off that one for now. And so that leaves us with... Uh, it rooms, which we don't... Or, uh, it's game state, current adventure, which... Let's see, is that actually what it's set to right now? No. Oh, but it's probably not set there, there because of the init for... Yeah. Because this is probably happening on start in data loader. So in fact... Let's just do it in a wake on data loader. It's because that's before the start function, so any of my start stuff will be after. And then you could always just do uh, the script execution order to really hammer it home. Okay, so it's not set. So we need to uh, make another adventure. Oh, 
Oh, it's not seeing it. Ah, that's probably why we were getting errors. It's because I moved. Yes, okay. Hey, look at that. Now you can see it. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll work that out later. But, um... Test adventure. Clone. Give it the old save, even though I didn't need to. Now, when we go and look, we have the two. Okay, so it does fail. Fails either direction, so. Let's find out what values are being passed through there. Oh! <laughs> it's definitely not going to be that one. Go look. Oh! Apparently he did not want me breakpointing. Okay, so it doesn't look like we lost anything, per se. Okay. So I suppose we'll try one more time. On selected room. Oh, 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 oh. Right. We literally just had this discussion. So for some reason... The adventure drop down adventure. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness gracious. Okay. That'll do it. We were on the wrong, wrong uh, drop down. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that makes sense. That does not. Oh, duh. Okay, I know where we're going here. Copy-paste errors, basically. In fact, we'll just delete that one for now so we don't get that issue later. Okay, test adventure selected. And if we go look at our selected adventure... We see this test adventure. Now it's into the Great Woods. 
Awesome. So the only thing that we haven't finished yet is selecting the room. Which, uh, room building. Oh, wait, no, we have done that. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, 3.2, 0 0.2, and then we can spawn cats and change the adventure. Awesome. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So we took care of some IO issues. We, uh, fix some of our where our data was it was in the wrong class which you know it happens sometimes and we've got four very helpful buttons that will save me a lot of clicking about cool so what we can do next uh, actually let's test this out uh, room editor let's drag a cat in there let's switch to a different room drag a cat in there Oh man, this is exciting. Okay. Oh, I love it. Ah, oh, so much. Okay. So now let's save. Our cats have their room position. A keen eye notices that their room positions are negative 9001, which tells me that somewhere in my code logic, I failed, which is fine. If value does not equal null, grab its position. And the thing that they're saving is... That. And when they get set to a room... Ah! Right, 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 right. Okay. So what's happening here... Let's go open our moose cat class again. So we are, uh, oop. so we're attaching the moose cat to the object. So that is happening correctly. What we're not doing is uh, updating their data. So there's a few ways we could approach this. One is we could do something of a cyclical reference back, basically, so that the data has the cat and the cat has the data. That seems reasonable to me. And so from there, we could do data dot, oh, whoops, got to make it singular. Data dot room, and then let's make sure there's no, there's not, okay. So that would fix that. And then this value needs to be set when the cat is created, which is in the spawner. Why did it show? I'll have to look that up later, why it was showing four. There should really only be these two. In fact, I should really consolidate these. But we'll do that tomorrow. For now. Do this. <laughs> I just noticed the, yeah, we, uh... Kind of doing both back, both directions. That's fine. We'll eventually clean that up one one way or another. Probably with an event, being uh, perfectly honest. Okay, so now we're going to spawn some cats again. Matter of fact, we could probably just use the loader. 
Yep. And then we'll go through and we will assign the cats. So we'll set this room. Get in there. That room. Get in there. That room. Get in there. And now save. And now we can see that our cats have their actual room data saved. So when we close and reopen, it may not work initially. We'll just fix it once we check. Oh, oh, worked, worked on the first try. Exciting. Okay, there's one more thing that we need to fix. When these rooms are spawned. As our room builder. Which is happening, I think rooms data is where that's happening, yeah. Ah, this is for IO loading, okay. Just so when we load, it'll still update over here. Oh. Null reference, you say? Hmm. Intriguing. So that caused no reference error at line 46, which would be the positional data. Forty six. That's fine. Eighty seven. Thirty one. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess we won't do that for now. But uh, I will mull it over overnight and I'll figure it out probably tomorrow. Might even just be something that needs to happen after loading is finished. Possibly. This is all in start, correct? I'm actually surprised this doesn't work on start then. Why wouldn't that work on start? Because if we go over to room data, it has them all. Although I will note that I see some none, none cats here. So we'll need to fix that. And that's happening because of our loader, once again, basically this one as well. Probably can't do this. Need to manually rebuild rooms. For tomorrow. Make a note for myself, that way I don't forget. And yeah, that was stupidly productive. That's a nice feeling. Just gotta have a another five dozen of these and we'll be off to something. Anywho, thanks for watching, when and where you do, and have a nice day or night.